All right, so Matt Riddle, not the only NXT star coming to the main roster. Saturday Night's Observer Radio. Dave said Dominic Dijakovic is headed to Raw. Now, first mm-hmm. first thought when you hear that is, what? How is he going up before Keith Lee? Matt Riddle, obviously, is heading to SmackDown. They announced that on SmackDown. And this is this is what I gather from all of this. The reason Matt Riddle is going to the main roster is because he's been in developmental forever. And the main reason he was signed in the first place, WWE would not touch Matt Riddle for years because of weed. And so eventually, when it became abundantly clear that he was going to be going to New Japan and he could be a huge star, all of a sudden they wanted him. And I've mentioned this a million times. If, if you want to be signed by WWE... Make sure the world knows that other people are interested in you. Then you will get a deal. So, he signs to Developmental. He's been there freaking forever. It's ridiculous. And so, the reality is, he either gets called up to the main roster, or he's leaving. And he could go to AEW in a heartbeat. He could go to New Japan. So, they brought him up to the main roster. So, here he is. He's going to be on SmackDown. So, that was pretty much, in a way, their hand was forced. But... With, with Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic, okay? You know, in a, in a perfect world, like, Keith Lee needs to go to the main roster. That dude, that dude could be a big deal on the main roster. He's, he's way better all around than Dijakovic. He's a better promo. He's a better worker. He's not as tall, but he sure is bigger. And Vince loves big dudes. And Vince loves Keith Lee. Loved him over Survivor Series weekend. But... It is still a third brand on the USA Network. And in this case, what I think is going on is one of these men is far more valuable to NXT. And that man is Keith Lee. And so Dijakovic, who also just happened to be tall, he jumps over everybody in Undisputed. He jumps over. He leaps over everybody with his great height. He's going to be going to Raw. And we'll see how he does. Sure. <laughs> I don't, uh, you know, there was somebody that, that made a joke about, well, good, now we're not going to have to see Keith Lee and Dijak anymore. Untrue. I have a feeling that Keith Lee, uh, I don't know if he'll end up on SmackDown or not when he does come up. He seems like somebody that would end up on Raw, though, so I don't think we've seen the end of those two going at each other. And, you know, with Dijak, he's probably better off on the main roster. I, I would like to see... You know, he's such a unique presence in, you know, his size. He's got great athleticism. I have not been as enthralled with with him in some matches that are not Keith Lee, uh, especially in quite some time. But, you know, him going up there and slamming against guys who are, are his size or about his size or, you know, at least a little bit smaller, I'm kind of ready to see that happen. Him up there hossing about with, with other people. So we'll see what happens. Same thing with Keith Lee. I'm not sure how long you keep him in NXT. I know he's valuable down there, but he may be more valuable up on the main roster soon. WWE has banned the Buckle Bomb, otherwise known as the Power Bomb into the Turnbuckles, it says right here, for those of you that don't know what a Buckle Bomb is. So, I, as much as I'm sure this will be denied, I have been told that the impetus was Nia Jax almost killing Kyrie Sane with that Buckle Bomb about a month ago. Every time they're in the ring together, there's there's a near disaster. And, of course, there's another near disaster with their match that's coming up on Monday, but... We were told that it does not appear to have been Nia's fault. This one actually was an accident. could happen to anybody. But that buckle bomb was not. And now you can't do the buckle bomb anymore. 